Here we're going to solve a problem that involves two balloons that are charged and set into position as shown. We're to determine uh, what's the charge on each of the balloons. Now for this problem we're going to make a few assumptions you probably couldn't make in everyday life. We're going to assume that there's the same charge in each balloon. There's no reason that should be but for us to solve this problem we're going to have to assume that they were charged exactly the same. We're going to assume that none of that charge is leaving or leaking to the air. We're also going to assume this is a symmetrical situation and that we can treat each balloon as a point charge. So what would we need to measure in a lab environment? Well, we need to measure, one, the angle between the charges. So we'll call that phi for now. We will need to measure the distance between the charges. We'll call that D. And we need to measure the mass of each of the balloons. Call that M. Now, given some values, how could we solve this? Well, first thing we need to do is draw a free body diagram. So we have the force of the string acting on it, we'll call that T. We have the weight acting on one balloon. And we have an electrical force between the balloons, between the balloons and or one balloon and the other balloon. We'll call that Fe for an electric force. Now you might notice I only drew one free body diagram. Because we assume this was a symmetrical situation, we can actually solve for one balloon, and that solution will be the same for the other balloon. So to get started, we can we know an equation for gravity. We can figure that out in the beginning if you want, or you can wait till later, but we might as well do it now. So about 0 0.098 Newtons for the weight of one of the balloons. We also, if you look at our free body diagram, our tension is in a weird direction. So let's gonna define some coordinate axes. We're gonna call up positive y, we'll call to the right positive x, which means our tension is in neither x nor y, so we're going to have to break it into components. So the tension is going to have an x component and a y component. And we can write down the relationship between the, the two components of tension and the tension itself. So Tx is going to be, well actually we need an angle. And if we think about our previous drawing, this angle phi, if this is symmetrical, each of these angles at the top are angles that we're dealing with in our new situation. So we're really going to say the angle theta that we're using is actually half of our angle between the two uh, balloons. So that's going to be about seven degrees and that's going to show up right there. So the X component tension is really the tension times the sine of angle theta and the Y component is the tension times the cosine of angle theta. Now we also have one other force, our new electrical force that we're gonna use just a basic Coulomb model for electrical force. So we can say that the electrical force is equal to Coulomb's constant times charge one times charge two, divided by the distance between the charges squared. And now since one of our assumptions was that the charges were identical, we can say that Q1 equals Q2, we'll just call it Q. So our, when we um, substitute and start solving this, we can replace KQ1, Q2, which is KQ squared on top of this. Now we have a free body diagram, we can write a couple of Newton's second law equations. So in the x direction, sum of the force in the x equal, we have our electrical force minus the x bar of the tension force, that equals m times a in the x direction. And in the y, we have the y part of the tension force minus the gravity force equals m times a in the y direction. Now, our, our balloons are suspended here, so we know that they have no acceleration, so we can set those both to zero. And right now we can, at this point, the main part of the physics is done and just a little algebra to work through our equations to finish this off. So let's start in the y direction. We have T cosine theta. I'll bring the gravity force to the other side, adding it to both sides equals the force to the gravity. That allows us to solve for the tension. So tension equals the gravity force on one balloon divided by the cosine of the angle of theta. So that's gonna be 0 0.098 divided by cosine of seven, so our tension force is gonna be 0 0.099 Newtons. We can then use that in our X equation. So we have our Coulomb model, KQ squared, since the charges were the same, over in our picture, the distance between the charges we call D, over D squared. Well, that's gonna equal um, T times the sine of our angle theta, so the the so charge we're looking for squared is going to be equal to T sine theta times D squared all divided by K. 
and if we plug some numbers in here, that's going to give us 0 0.099 times the sine of 7 degrees times 0.2 meters squared divided by Coulomb's constant of 9 times 10 to the 9th. And that is going to equal 5.4 times 10 to negative 14 Coulomb squared. And since we want the actual charge itself, we want the square root of this. So therefore, the, the charge we're looking for is going to be equal to the square root of that, which is 2.3 times 10 to the negative 7 Coulombs, or 230 nanocoulombs.